Hello, hopefully you enjoyed this upcoming performance from National E-Theatre. If you do, uh, well, all of the artists taking part in this project, writers, directors and actors, are self-employed and currently unemployed thanks to the coronavirus outbreak here in the UK. And so if you want to support them, you can do so by visiting the links, which will be in the description below the video, and you can donate as little or as much as you want to and feel able to. Uh, that money will all be distributed evenly among all the artists taking part. If you can't do that, at the very least, we'd love you to be able to share the videos on your social media accounts, on Facebook, on Twitter, with a friend who might be missing their weekly trip to the theatre. Anyone you think might enjoy it, uh, that is also a massive help. You can follow the project and uh, be alerted to any upcoming videos by following the channel, uh, which you can do so up above, or you can follow us on Twitter on at National E Theatre. Thank you for watching and sit back now and enjoy the show. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I want to tell you two stories. One is Virginia Woolf's and the other one is mine. Who? Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, so, listen, there's no perfect way to start this, which is fine because I'll come back to that. Because, because I'll come back to it. So, first of all, there is an elephant in the room. So, let us deal with that. The elephant is me. Okay. I am the elephant. Because I reckon that this... <laughs> this is really not what you expected. Like, Orlando is a period piece, right? She's not wearing a ruff. No, 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 she's not. And that's absolutely fine. Because... That is not what this is, which means that we get to start from scratch with absolutely no expectation of about what this should be, which is perfect. Perfect. Well, well, ideally, right, we would be doing this in a grand hall and we would be lit by candlelight. Uh, we're not far off. But, uh, you know, we would be in this grand hall and I would be here and I would be just looking dashing in like a robe and then out of the kitchen amazingly ladies and gentlemen Tilda Swinton <laughs> she's not in there <laughs> she doesn't live with me <laughs> I'm sorry please don't leave please don't leave um like I said there is absolutely no way perfect way to start this um and frankly I will take whatever I can get because you cannot make people do things. Like, I cannot say how you guys react like this, like, feel like, feel this. I can only say, I'm going this way. Please come with me. So, please. <laughs> I want to try an act of communion. Not, a, not an actual communion, like with bread and wine. Although, I will be drinking because we're on a lockdown and it is past five o'clock. What's five o'clock anymore? Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, okay, so normally we would do this. This is communion with a small c. So normally we would do this and it would be super poetic and we would dim the lights and, and I would be super eloquent, but then I am not Virginia Woolf and this is not the National Trust. Um, and we've only got 20 minutes. So, here we go. This is, this is communion with a small c. And you don't need to do anything. Just, if you are still there, um, please come with me. So, prologue. Imagine yourself as a kid, okay? So, like, you're eight years old. Like, yeah, you're eight. Give or take. Before, before fashion kicks in. So, the... You wear the stuff that you really like, not that everybody else likes. So the stuff that you wear, like, it really, it represents the... Okay, so you are eight. You're eight years old. <laughs> and you are at a, you're at a jumble sale. 
and you're about to buy some pivotal stuff. Okay, so you're rifling through this box of paperback books. Okay, and there's a lot of Mills and Boone in here. Oh, hello. Um, so these are romances where the men are men and the women are women and the men are withholding and the women are journalists on the whole. And I am not knocking that because I've absolutely read these. And, you know, when these people make love, volcanoes erupt and, you know, uh, wind goes howling over the plains. And, oof, you know, but, uh, but there's, here's this one book, okay, and this is the moment. Orlando by Virginia Woolf. The longest and most charming love letter in literature. Okay, so all Virginia writes this love letter, chapters one through six for Vita Sackville West after the relationship was over to say, this is what you mean to me, always. Uh, okay, so we are eight, but this book is gonna stay with you, always. So, chapter one. Okay, so I would... <laughs> So I would love to tell you this story, the whole story, and I would take you on this epic journey and you would meet Orlando and he's this Elizabethan little boy and here's how he, he falls in love with this Russian princess, but then she sails away, right, and he's standing there, he stands in the river and he's fucking, he's swearing after her and he's like, you're a beep and a beep, 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 and you're fucking beep, beep. But you know that oh, like Orlando, like he really, he really beeps her. Um, okay, but he, sh she says away and he takes his broken heart and he goes to, he gets, he, you know, moves on and he goes to Constantinople and then he, you know, one day he wakes up and he's a woman and this is how they are the same, but they are different. And this is what it feels like when you leave home and this is what it feels like when you fall in love and, 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 and this is what it feels like when you are always the same, but you are always different. And then when they do fall in love, they fall in love with this sea captain called Marmaduke Bonthrop Shalmadine, I shit you not. And the love is ecstasy, like it's fucking ecstasy. And when Shalmadine looks at Orlando, they say, I see you like a ship coming towards me with the sun at your back. And just like that, at the end of the book, like after 500 years, all of the phases of Orlando's life open up. And in every single phase of the book, they are always Orlando. And there's this bit about, like, uh, with ships on an unknown sea, and there's this bit where, you know, she's running on, you're running on a donkey and there's a dog there, like, a shit ton happens, like, a shit ton happens. And at the very end of the book, even at the end of the book, Orlando is looking out, like, Orlando looks ahead. And I would tell you all of this, <laughs> but we've only got 20 minutes, and I really feel like I've been talking for 20 minutes already. So the book ends, okay? And this, the twelfth stroke of midnight, 1928, and Virginia puts down her pen and she leans back and she thinks, I wonder if Vita felt that because this book was written, not just written for somebody, this absolute bag of nuts of a book was written about them, this massive life. Virginia says, when I see you, I see light hitting a prison. And can you imagine if somebody looked at you like that? Chapter two. So I am not as eloquent as Virginia Woolf, obviously. No, 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 don't shout all at once. Um, <laughs> but this is a love letter that I wish I could have written because this is a character without a category in a story that does not end and even after the book shuts, Orlando just keeps going. Like, they, uh, I like to imagine that Orlando is out there and they're changing their clothes and they're changing their ideas. And if Orlando was standing here today, this kid born in the 1500s, that would make Orlando almost as old as the oldest living thing on earth, which is the ever living jellyfish, right? Because unless somebody eats it or it gets swamped by a plastic bag it will survive forever by returning to youth 
and starting again as a polyp. A polyp. <laughs> Chapter three. I see the hotel, the curtain is open, and I can see the sky, she asks me to stay. Whenever I shut my eyes I'm here, oh I'm back. No, I'm there again. I see B. B was... B is the most poetic person I have ever met. Like the way that she says my name, it sounds like me. Like it sounds like the kind of person that I would want to be. When I see you, I see light hitting a prism, and that is, that is B. And we met in this hotel. Um, so there's B at the bar. This is me, sniffing around the free buffet. <laughs> Do I want a drink? Yes. Um, she had forgotten her toothpaste and later on that night I knocked on her door with a tube of crest and here we are, we are standing in this doorway, right, and we're, we were smiling at each other and then we're in the room and the rooms all look the same and you don't bring anything with you but the clothes are on your back and there is B, and B asks me to stay, and I just, I, f I fell in love with B, like it just, oh, I remember looking at the way that she moved, like an animal. And her hands. I would start from here. Chapter four. Uh, so, B laid this card on my table once, bisexual, and she said, "Is this you?" And I said, "No, no, 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 no. I don't know. I don't think so. No, because this card suggests this kind of open season." where everybody is invited when in fact nobody is like i'm like that person on halloween who is in but they keep the lights off and if you knock on the door i shall mute the tv like that is what i am like i just like you you can knock on my door uh, i have worn this i have worn this label once in the spirit of openness but it did not suit me like, I tried it on in front of a friend, a very good friend, in fact, and I came clean, as it were, about how I feel. And I thought, yeah, you know what, I really, I am, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this word, because we're friends. And the minute that I did, this mist gathered between us, and in the mist... She loses sight of my face and she is saying midlife crisis much and she's saying anything you can do I can do better and she's like she's saying it's just a phase oh 
Firstly, loom bands are a phase. A girl crush is something that we had on Hanson before we realised they were boys. And in terms of doing something better than me, let's see you come down from the pillow, shall we, princess? Because if it ends here, and you immediately tell your boyfriend about it, that is hardly blue is the warmest colour, is it? I also told a male friend about it, and he immediately asked me, oh, do you want to sleep with me and my straight wife? And I said, oh, no, no. In fact, you know, I would rather, I would rather eat my lunch in the rain. And when a bus goes by, it blows my hat off. Like, I think I would find that more of a turn on. And naturally, I said none of that. I just did this. Hmm. <laughs> it was not meant to be a challenge. Like, I didn't know we were competing. Uh, oh, I've heard about them. I've heard about what they'll do. They'll sleep with anyone. Oh, will they? Them, I am sitting right here. You know what, fuck it. You know what, you, you win, right? If I made you feel uncomfortable, I apologise. Like, have your own parade. You're right to be proud. It's fun being straight. So, do you know, we were, we were, we were forever friends. We were friendship bracelet. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, that shit's forever. So, do you know what? I think I was just, I was, a, I think I was stupid and I was a stupid person and I shall respectfully withdraw. I shall do my living in the shadows. Thank you very much. And I have. My life is really small and I do not talk about it. It's quite dishonest, really. So I never shared B. B and I lived like the little prince on a planet of our own. And on our planet, we had picnics on the floor and we watched the Hoop Nanny on New Year's Eve. And our planet had a poo bear that I brought from Earth and our planet had hotel art and a checkout time. And on our planet, I was not bisexual. And on our planet, she was not married. So I rescued the friend from feeling awkward, but at the expense of the friendship. I shall never tell them about B. You know, they'll say, what's new in your life? And I will say, nothing, not a thing. Like, you could fit my life in a fucking egg cup. And when the friend rings, I will protect myself by never picking up the phone. So, do you know, I'm going to take that off, that label, because I just, it's not me. And I think, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to, I'll look through the cards and I shall see what else we've got. Middle-aged. No, thank you. <laughs> There's only two ages for a woman, thank you very much. And one is early 20s, the other is Dame Judy. So, no, do you know what? I'm gonna to turn to Orlando for this. 500 years of change, how would you label yourself? And I turn to my oldest friend and Orlando says, Orlando, sexuality, bibliophile. And <laughs> chapter five. Fucking hate this chapter. Um, so I, I hate, I hate to talk on the phone because when I do pick up, I have zero, zero phone chemistry. There is only there's mum, there's B. Right, and when I talk with B, the conversation. <laughs> is rubbish like it's so rubbish like <laughs> like we talk about we talk about our planet in the hotel 
and we talk about what we are wearing. But like something without a stitch of sex to it. So, like Christmas pyjamas. And B says, oh, clothes. They say a lot about a person, you know. And I'm like, yeah, tell me about it. And just, no matter how unappealing, she just, she's just, she's got this kind of a voice that just, you know, she says my name. I love the way that she clears her throat. Right, okay, so I'm in my flat, right? in my flat and I ask her where she is and she says oh she's out she's outside right she's hiding because she cannot call me from her house because she's married in in that house and I really get it like I get it this feeling that there's there's nowhere to be and so she is outside and she's walking around the block and she's standing outside the station and she's always going somewhere and she tells me this and I'm like, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where, where are you? And she says, um, oh, I'm standing, I'm standing by a skip outside of Tesco Express. And I'm like, fucking, just don't stand there. Where the fuck are you? Go somewhere, go somewhere. Where are you going? And then she doesn't say anything. And I say, are you still standing there? And she says, yes, but she, sh- she shouldn't be standing there. Like, it's, it's nowhere. I have said that I would give her a key. And she says, no. And then I say, oh, you are such a coward. It's so easy to hurt people when they're not in front of you. Like, it's like throwing a grenade, you know, and you can throw it and then you hang up and they're not there. So you can paint an image of them that suits you better. And they're like, this suits my mood and this suits what I believe. So I, I'm going to use the things that she worries about the most to break, to break her. And she says, oh, she's got more to lose and that she wishes and she wishes. And she wishes, and I say, please stop asking for wishes. You know, if wishes were granted, we would be living (laughs) like in a fucking Ewok village. We wouldn't live like this. We we just wouldn't live like this. You won't even come around my flat. You have reduced me. You've reduced me. And how do I finish this sentence with even a shred of dignity? And then B says... Maybe this was just a phase. So I go to the hotel, right? I go to the hotel and I wait and I wait and I wait because we said that we would meet and she promised that she would come this time and I sit on the edge of the bed and I call her vain and stupid and callous and I say, you're you're a fucking coward. I beep her. Orlando, where do I go from here? And Orlando gets up and Orlando walks to the door and Orlando stands in the door frame and says, do you know, you could walk out of this room And you could be different. Just imagine yourself different. And I say, I just want to go home. And Orlando says, sorry, kid. Chapter six. So I said at the start that I would tell you two stories. And one was Virginia's and the other one was mine. But I didn't tell you who I was because I'm sick to death of this particular self. I want another, like I want, I want you to see me differently. I think um, that we have become cruel to each other. 
I mean, when I think about B, my thoughts are mean and my thoughts are every day because I think about her all the time, like all the time. And I think about arguing with her and I think about calling her names and I'm vehement about her because then I can bring her down to size and make her up to be less than she was. But when I think about the hotel and what we had, like in such a small space, and it was good. It was so good. But I don't live there anymore. And I am tired of being small. I mean, I see Orlando's life, like this horizon and all the great moments of their life are chiming at once. And even after the book shuts, Orlando just keeps going. Like this massive life. So I wanted to try this act of communion. See Orlando now, like without the rough. <laughs> Imagine Orlando stepping out of that room and starting again. And I will see you, I will see you like a ship coming towards me with the sun at your back. I will see light hitting a prism. <laughs>